you have a new girlfriend, which is really, I'm so excited for you. You met yeah. her skydiving. And I wanted to ask you to go on to the subject of, you know, romantic relationships. Because a lot of the people that watch my channel, they're on this twin flame journey. And it does. It seems like none of us know for sure we are coming into just surrendering what will happen there. We don't know. We don't know if we're going to end up with someone else or with that person. Yeah. Um, but it seems to me that if we are to end up with that person, it would it would only work out if we were both in that space to be so open and surrendered and basically in this sort of zone that you're speaking of here. You know what I mean? That acceptance, that unconditional love, that um unity consciousness that just embodying love you know and i want to ask not you controlling just the in general person. not just twin flame label but in general like how do you see relationships shifting as our planet shifts that's the thing we have to relate <laughs> mm -hmm. so we have to find a common ground we have to meet them where they're at we have to not try to make them into us we have to yes. meet them where they're at and my this... twin flame said that to me one time like talisha you do know i don't have to like everything you like like we are not the same person <laughs> right. right exactly right so um you know instead of wanting them to do something or wanting things from them right it's good to spend time have a gentle embrace a listening ear sound device uh, only on what was given to them, not premeditative advice. Like you're just waiting to dish it out. You're waiting for him to say that so you can give your little two cents, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Presence, your essence, your love, your light, your soft comforting, um, uh, just being there, a smile, your tears of joy, encouraging statements, gestures of faith, belief, you know, um, and, and, and just your, your feelings, sharing your feelings. So the, what me and my partner do, is that we take time to sit with each other and just hold each other and we invite the other person in so to drop all tensions apprehensions no preconceived notions and presumptions we need to ask permission so if we don't ask permission and permission isn't granted there is a wall of tension up it's like oh i didn't know that was coming i didn't know what to expect sorry you caught me off guard you know so like when you ask permission, so is it a, can, can I enter? Can I come in? Yes. As soon as you say yes, yes, you can come in rather than just walking in my house. They're like, hey, what are you doing in my house? You don't ask to come in here, right? It's like someone like, mm -hmm. touch your guitar. Hey, can I touch this? Hey, whoa. If you just said, may I touch your guitar? I'd say, no, that's my grandpa's special guitar and I don't let anybody touch it. It's just who I am. And the person's like, oh, sorry, I won't touch it then. And then we go back to being normal. But it's just like, are you too late when you're like overstepping your boundaries? It's so true. And this is what twin flames do on this journey. We push at each other. We call it like a push-pull phenomenon. You're exploiting like your you're, you're pushing and pulling and you're pulling at them and you want their energy and you want their attention. And then they run away and they push you even harder away because you're just, you you're have these expectations the and you want way. control over it. Because you're seeking to get attention well, rather than giving them attention, the attention that they deserve, uh. right? So we need to be beside each other so that our hearts could ry rhythm together and beat as one. So we need to just lay without any want, desire, or thinking of what to do next. We need to just quit and we need to ask them permission if they could enter. They say, yes, it's granted. And you say, then you walk into the person and they walk into you. And then all of a sudden you start getting this like psychic conversation. Like it's like you're, you, the thoughts you hear are them and they're telling you exactly what they need. You know, you may not get the message clear, but trust me, the information is transferring. And when you're there, you're blending. Your souls are already working it out as a new experience. You're not going to get the, this is what's going to happen. Let it happen. Let it be. And then it'll show up as a waking experience in your day-to-day -day life of what you need to manage. So, like, mm -hmm. just being in silence with the other person is the most comforting thing that we can do for our generation. It's generative. 
we generate, we heal, we get younger, right? That's so really interesting because there's a, a twin flame person that has a channel and that's what they said. If you ever get together with your twin flame after, you know, some of us have years of separation. They said at first, just sit in silence together. Just sit there. Receive. Because the way I feel with the energy, it's like it hasn't been ready to come together because it feels like a short circuit. Like it's literally so intense and so much. It reminds me of like I've said before, like, you know, I go to Europe and I plug my North American plug into this yeah. socket and it's just like, well, wow, like short, short socket. Like it fires yeah. off. It's not leveled out. It's not balanced. So it's like this whole process of coming into this balanced, surrendered state so that you can just sit with that energy that is so yeah. powerful and so strong and beautiful. Yeah. And we, we don't watch TV. We sit with each other. You know, uh, mm -hmm. we dance for each other, you know, she'll take a turn, I'll take a turn, she, <laughs> you know, she's into like writing poetry, so she'll read me poetry, or like, I'll make up poetry, or we make up songs, and we sing songs, so we're, and we're very, um, you know, we, we really encourage the other person, and we, we, we say a lot of good things about, at the end of the day, what we admire about the person, or, or how we see the person, and uh, just uh, giving strength to the other person's strength. Everybody likes to be like, you know, petted and stroked a little, you know? So mm -hmm. it, it has to, a lot to do with, um, you know, really giving to the other person, not, and without any expectation to return, like selflessly giving just to That's give. That's the expectation that person, part. That is the hard yeah. part because everyone that, gives to get, it seems. That's not right. everyone, but there's yeah. a lot of that. It's Myself taking. included. <laughs> it's taking. Right, it's stealing. It's, it's stealing. Yeah, yeah. It, it's taking energy. It, 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 you didn't ask permission. You come into my house. And it's like, hey, can I have something on your fridge? Yes, you can. Yeah. You walk up to my fridge. You try to take something. Hey, buddy, don't do that. <laughs> right? now, now, now you made me sort of tense. Now you made me tense. And, you wow, know, I have to so step funny. up and say, hey, don't do that. Right? We have to back. Yes. And, you know, and then he feels bad and awkward that he did something wrong again. Oh, 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 sorry, sorry, you know, like, you know, <laughs> is that we, we don't even need to do this if you just ask permission. So it's yes. just like, is it okay if I touch you here? Is it okay if I, if I do this? Can, can, I, can I rub your back? You know, we got to stop thinking like, oh, let me just do this for you, you know? So it's like a thing like, um, you know, uh, it's like, oh, I, I, your, your boyfriend comes home and he's like, Oh, look what I did for you. And you're like, well, what did you do for me? Don't, don't do that for me. You know, so mm -hmm. that you and we're separate. Right. But when I change the me and you to the we and the us, and I say, look what I did for us. She's like, oh, what'd you do for us? Oh, I planned a nice day. Oh, beautiful. Would you like to come? Could I ask you permission and invite you on to this thing that I would like to do for us so we could be together? Oh, yes, I would. <laughs> Come home. It's yeah. like, look what I did for you. I planned a trip to make you happy. She's like, fuck your trip. I don't want to be happy. <laughs> you create that resistance. And you're right. You create a separation. A separation, even through your words. You watch your words. You know, it's like, are you saying, is it for us? Is it for we? We should do this together. Would you like to do this together? You know, rather than even, would you like to do this with me? You know, it's like still me and you. You so you gotta watch that me and you is 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 saying we're 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 not the same person. You know, we're we're not working together. You know what I mean? So it's like the difference between the willpower is like, uh, and maybe oh I might be at the job interview. Maybe that leaves room for doubt, and when doubt creeps in, uh, you're you're screwed. You know, so it's like. And then you're just battling back and forth like a ping pong ball. Should I? Shouldn't I? Should I? Shouldn't I? Should I? Shouldn't I? And it's a crapshoot which one you're going to pick. Because you're indecisive. And that's what doubt does is it makes you an indecisive person. Right? So, yes. and then you can ask people for help and they just tell you through their perception. It's like, oh, um, you know, I've been dating my boyfriend. He's an asshole, you know, and da 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 for the last 10 minutes. Should I dump him? And they're like, yeah, well, the last 10 minutes sounds like he's an asshole, but you've been dating him 10 years, and, you know, maybe you should make the choice. You know, like, <laughs> if I said dump him and you dumped him, they'd hate you. Well, what are you doing tell, telling me to dump my boyfriend? Well, well, you asked, you can't make up your own mind. You know, you're not making your own choices for yourself. 
you know yeah. and going back to the like the the maybe and and the the can't you know can't says you're too lazy uh you're just unwilling and you just don't even want to do it you know so basically uh when you say maybe i'll be at the job interview that's doubt when i say i will i enact the will like i will be there next week then you the will enacts and the will gets you to do it the will will get you up that morning the will will give you the strength to be there the confidence the exuberance the excitement right rather than mm -hmm. the doubt which is draining it's draining you. It makes you tired, and you're like, "Oh, I sleep in. I don't need to go to the interview. I'm tired." You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. so like doubt takes up a lot of the mental energy, which gives you laziness and lethargy, and stops you from getting off the couch. Right? Being indecisive. So oh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. You're just spending like five hours a day mulling over the same little thing, rather than just saying yeah like let's see what happens and just like let's make some and that's the thing with trying the trying implies you're going to do it over and over and over well i'll try to be better it means you don't really want to change just to make attempts at it over and over so when i say i will be a better person and see yourself as a better person then you can be a better person and and just realize that you already are a, a the best person you are you know mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. see yourself as healed to be healed you have to see yourself as found to realize you're not lost. If you say I'm lost, you're lost. And then when you realize the best part about being lost is, is, is uh, uh, getting found was realizing you were never even lost. You were just pretending. Mm -hmm. It's just a big act. It's always an act, right? And so for, me, for you to find, what? like, it's honestly, to me, it just shows me how much you're in your flow. The fact that, you know, you met this partner of yours that you're with now you met her skydiving and it's crazy i i got to meet her and i just think you seem so perfect for each other oh. that it's almost insane it is and, insane. she's just like me like right like, and i'm just yeah. like i'm to be really honest with you ryan like for me to look at you i would feel like you could make a lot of women uncomfortable because you're so free yes. because you're so comfortable with yourself i feel uh, like 99 percent of women out there would get very uncomfortable with that right and, and for and, you and, to have been in your flow to just meet this person and bam like yeah. it's it shows me that you're in your flow like were you even looking for for a partner or how i was calling out for it you know like wow. i lived with my last partner for two years we broke up and she lived in the same house so that I could reconcile everything. But I realized that uh, she wanted to basically only get my attention. So if she got fixed, I wouldn't give her any more attention because she'd be healed. So it was her prerogative to stay broken. So basically anything I said, she would just stay broken to get my attention so that it would continually try to fix her. Uh, <laughs> you know? yeah. So basically, I just, you know, dropped that. And, you know, I even foregoed my own pleasure, my own desires. You know, I really wanted to to clean that up and, you know, and attract mm -hmm. and develop myself and, and and attract someone for me. So I just put out the singles. But this is the thing. You have to close this the stories before new ones can open. So That's I wanted important. to really, really, really properly close that one because I didn't want to drag that relationship into my next relationship and have her hear it all and blah 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 and work it out i wanted it wrapped up in a nice little bow and done and you know i i did what i all i could do and what i had to do in the end was basically do nothing because it's not my karma it's not my business you know what i mean mm -hmm. it, it, it's her to learn how to be self-sufficient it's up to her to, to to handle her own emotions i can't fix uh, and that's what i do that was my lesson like i fix people you know what i mean but like i have to realize that some people i have to learn how to fix them in a different way you know especially when it's your partner it gets really personal you know what i mean like if it's just mm -hmm. someone else you're very easily able to step back and monitor like the the level of involvement with the person you know and like yeah. When it's your family and friends, you really play out your dark sort of like, you know, bottom of the pit shit. Oh, yeah. You never yeah, really yeah. show anybody outside of that, right? So totally. that's why relationships are very actually enriching. And for me, yes, I, like you said, I would like to comment on uh, when you said if I make people 
I'm not going to just categorize women, but people. I may, I, if, like, I embody the truth, and if they're not telling the truth, like, even since I empathize, I know the truth. And since I feel them, I feel the truth. If they're saying one thing, I'm feeling another, then I know how to guide them to their truth. Like, come on out with it. Just say it. Just say it, you know? And if you're not willing to tell the truth and be honest and authentic, it's going to be uncomfortable for you just as a feeling for you. You will feel yes. comfortable because you are not telling the truth. You know what I mean? And I actually enjoy uncomfortable situations because I jump <laughs> on planes. I, you know what I mean? I do yes. all kinds of stuff that's very uncomfortable for people. I public speaking is very uncomfortable. You know, so all those Honestly, things. your dance that you did in front of us, I thought of what I would uh, maybe consider... 3D friends, I'll call it. They're just not as open. They're not as awakened. Nothing wrong yeah. with that. But I could just imagine, like, I brought them to a sound healing and they were extremely uncomfortable that I was almost chuckling to myself, just envisioning, like, a circle of them watching you do that. Right. How un incredibly uncomfortable that would make them. And it's because yeah. I, I feel it, too, with somewhere deep within me because it's like, because I would feel uncomfortable doing that. Right. Yeah, and I even have to close my eyes, and I've been working on opening my eyes so I can be more engaging to the people. So at this point of my journey with that, I have to, like, close my eyes so I can connect with the movements and be with the song, mm -hmm. the spirit, right, rather than, um, you know, but if I... I agree. I don't even want to show myself lately on my videos because I yeah. go into sort of a channeled state sometimes, yeah. and maybe I yeah. look weird, People and I don't feel comfortable. It, right? Even while yeah. you're speaking, sometimes I'm closing my eyes and just feeling your words and not yeah. looking present or, you know what I mean, or looking proper. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's like, um, yeah, truly listening and feeling, but, like, the, 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 the thing is, is, like, it, 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 you know, it's hard when people are looking at you, especially yeah. when you're stressing because uh, uh, there was an instance where, uh, you know, my partner said that she never told anybody her poetry until she met me. You know, Aww. she's been writing poetry for a long time. And it's also, it, it, in, it's, it's good to do so in, in certain instances because that is something near and dear to your heart. And say when you're a teenager and you're 15 and you read a poem to the wrong person with who's ignorant and doesn't see it for its true beauty because of their perception of their judgments and their all their kind of bad mirrors and fogs. And they're like, oh, that's stupid. You know, and then you take that belief on. It's like taking other people's beliefs on. You're like, oh, my poetry is stupid. And you quit. You know, you quit for yes. 10 years. You quit because yeah. of one person's little comment that, oh, that's stupid, you know? So that's why I don't go doing my dance in front of, you know, certain people because they won't get it. They they won't. They don't have the yes. capacity to even understand what that possibly could even be. And it also shatters their psyche a little bit because they're so wrapped up in disbelief that there is even spirits and that they even are one, that they even have a soul or there's even anything, you know what I mean? So yes. like they see that and then they're like, oh no, I'm hanging on to all my beliefs that aren't real. And, and if I believe that, then everything inside of me is a lie. But no, 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 uh, it's easier to continue the lie for them, right? And, and then that's why they say, that's stupid. Stop doing that. Let's get back to drinking and talking about the weather and non-consequential things in our lives and just, you know, like, pandering to like <laughs> wasting time just yabbering about like absolutely nothing relevant to our own lives and getting to know the person for who they are and understanding mm -hmm. who even that person is rather than you just constantly trying to people like when they meet you like oh who are you and they're like oh well i don't like brown and i, I don't like cucumbers and i'm not i'm not really good at you know, like going to the movies uh, and it, this is just things outside of yourself that you're trying to identify and like oh okay so you don't like brown that's who you are no you're much more than that you have like honor confidence you have a sensibility you have responsibility you have 
you know, someone who has a lot of grace or someone that can handle situations, high pressure situations, and he really keeps his cool. You know, these are the mm. qualities, the qualities of a person that really need to be like shared to understand who that person is. So it takes mm -hmm. a really good person to ask questions, you know, mm -hmm. ask questions about who you are rather than talking about stuff, like just stuff and like things that other people are doing that are causing them to be tense. Like, oh, the world's falling apart. Oh, da, 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 da. You know, the, do you want yeah. to lose? And it's like, you know, like, you, you know, that's outside of yourself. You know, you need to deal with inside what's inside. Or I want to get to know who's inside there, right? So if that's yeah. anything I do is I get that to come out of people. I get their true self to reveal to themselves so that they can feel comfortable being themselves in front of just one person. You know, some people have never felt comfortable in front of absolutely anybody, including their own mother, you know, especially, yeah. mothers, right? Because they yeah. have shit from their mothers, you know? It's so true. It's so true. And well, then, this has been so oh, then, awesome. I'll, I'll just finish that up just because yeah, yeah, it ties it in. Uh, suppression so suppression of emotions and all all uh it is is suppression breeds violence so when we suppress our true feelings we uh lack in authenticity and then we manipulate so then we subconsciously round about and never authentically clarify and say what it is that we actually need and we get it negatively so if we don't meet our needs through clarity and conscious uh vocalization and specific uh what it is i'm feeling right now you know uh then the subconscious will meet the need negatively if you don't meet the need head on well roundabout out the back door and then and then you're manipulating and then your partner's like i don't understand what it is that you want because you can't even say it you're like well, can't you see i'm angry can't you see you know what i mean mm -hmm. so when you suppress things you get angry so, and that's how you get disease is because the subconscious, if you load it up with negative thoughts, it has a well. And once the well, it pushes into the flesh, into the unconscious, and then a disease happens because you're not easy about it. You're, 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 you're agitated all the time yeah. and tense about it. So it's like a constant constriction. So there's no blood flow. So the f lack of flow actually starts to have stagnation and then their cancer ensues so cancer is always attached to an emotional toxicity of the system right so mm -hmm. if you just let your emotions out and speak them out and be truthful and authentic we we can be done with it like in a day almost you know wow. what I mean? rather than the 15 years of you holding on to that thing and believing it was something else and and just feeding it you know so that's why I found ayahuasca so powerful because it just like the amount that just I faced and yeah. came out of me in the one night. That's yeah. why I tell people, you know, like they say it's like 10 years of therapy in one oh, night. That's no uh, joke. You know, it would take a lot, your whole life to even know what was wrong with you and actually specifically get it and deal with them and manage them one at a time. Right. So it's yeah. like. The amount it, of processing. It, what I've done in the last four years, would I've been dealing with lifetimes of stuff like wow. lifetimes of stuff you know so once you clear the slate and you integrate you know the medicine does 50 percent, and you're supposed to go integrate and do the rest you know so that's what i tell people they come to me for healing i i'm not healing you you know i'm helping and encouraging you that's all i'm doing i'm uplifting you and inspiring you to do it on your own because if you're said ryan heals me or ayahuasca heals me or the mushrooms heal me, or my pills heal me. You are giving power to an outside entity other than yourself, which still says you're powerless to do anything because you believe someone else is going to do it for you. And this ties into the control. When people control people to get them to work for them, to do something that they don't want to do themselves. So I don't want to cook my food. Well, I'm going to control somebody with money to do so. If I don't want to dig in the, in the trench, I'm going to control somebody to do it for nothing. You know, and I'm going to step wow. up and tell them what to do against their will. I'll even like be mean to them. You know, and the world, it just seems like it's breaking free from this. It's from control wanting to transcend this. Yes, yeah, it's controlled. Yeah. And I mean, just hearing, I mean, I don't watch the news either. I don't watch TV. 
it just it's just too much i just i find it to be too much but there's when everybody's I suppressed see, emotionally they're suppressed yeah, and i see enough news to know you know there's mass shootings going on and this and that yeah. but that's exactly what i thought of when you're talking about these yeah. people holding this suppressed emotion and it just yeah. And then the, the whole culture is oppressed. You know, you, you look at like uh, uh, oppressed countries like, you know, Poland back in the day. That's oppression. Russia. Yes. Oppression. You know what I mean? It's like it, 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 suppression breeds violence people into an oppression. You know, it's like the next level after the suppression. Right. So in, in Russia, we don't want to hear what you have to say or, or we, we don't want to know your feelings. No sadness here or no happiness here. You'll get all the here. You know, it's like, yeah, it's like uh, hard. So, so when you, you, you cage in something long enough, then it gets angry that it's being held back and, and it wants to grow, but it's being held down and controlled. No, you can't do that. You can't even express your true song, your creativity. You need to be over in that factory or I'm going to do something and I'll control you through fear. So I'm going to take things away from you. I'll take away your house. I'll take away your degree. I'll take away this. You know, so then in fear, you feel suppressed and then you're on Prozac and morphine and all those kinds of like Oxycontin will suppress emotion. So uh, basically shut you down from feeling what it is you really need to feel to heal it. You know, so you have to go yeah. through the pain and through the anxiety and through the stuff and be with it. You know, so it's like. If I just sat with it and said, I'm prepared to feel anxiety for 15 minutes and actually just be with it. And, you know, I know it's going to be bad, but, you know, hey, let's go for a ride. Maybe I'll enjoy the anxiety this time, you know, but here's a pill for your anxiety, shuts off your emotions and just puts a blanket over top of it, a really heavy blanket. And you're like, oh, my God, I can't even move now. Right. Oh, so you're never going to deal with the problem because you're suppressing the problem. And you're, what you're doing is you're pushing it deeper and deeper into the flesh. And then the flesh gets cancer. And next thing you know, you have cancer. Your life's at stake. You're dying because it's an act of degradation. So whenever you're degrading yourself and judging yourself and judging others and telling them that they're stupid and, and you're getting angry, you are degrading. You are dying. You are literally dying when you are degrading. And when mm. I'm being generous and I'm generating and I'm encouraging, I am generating. I regenerate the DNA, right? Mm. So it's creating yourself. You are constantly in this, it's rebirth. Everything's dying for new life. So you're constantly recreating yourself all the time, right? But mm -hmm. if you are degrading and judging and not being compassionate, you are dying. So it's either living, dying, right? So it's just like you're dying quicker. You'll get wrinkles faster. You bags under your eyes. Uh, you gain some weight. Uh, I'm not feeling good. I don't look good. You know, it's like a reflection of who you are. So yes. you have to go be grateful. You have to go do acts of charity. You have to go help. I wonder a lot of people on this path look so young for their age. Right, yeah. <laughs> They're emanating I <laughs> What was oh, that? Yeah. Guess how old you are? Yeah. Oh my gosh. To me, you look like you are 25. Right. Here, I'm 38. <laughs> <laughs> Same with me. Guess how old I am. Do you know? 38? <laughs> 39. I'm older 30. than you. Oh, you're older. <laughs> wow. You look beautiful. You have very nice skin. Thank you. You my like a little. Yeah, oh, you look so you're so youthful at heart you just yeah. have this youthful energy about you that you I'm always laughing right and yeah like, I, I really act out things i'm like a like, good actor so i like really even pretending i'm neurotic i like like me and emmy don't even fight so we have like these pretend fights where we like oh griping and like oh blah, 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 right? <laughs> you just so want to it, act it out <laughs> i don't because it, it brings humor to it you know when you're laughing it's healed you know after the tears come the laughter and once you're laughing you you're, you're not gonna be crying about it anymore for lament you're like no it was pretty funny you know remember that time i got a little crazy yeah that was pretty funny you know what i mean like so it, 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 laughter heals, just like singing and dancing. Like you got to look at the expressions of joy and embody them. You know, mm -hmm. go do things that are going to make you laugh. Go do things that are going to make your body dance. Go 
Go make, go do things, go be around singing. You know what I mean? It, it is truly the greatest. I'm loving painting, ever. like painting pictures. Ah, it's painting. wonderful. Yeah, it expresses the subconscious. It, it scares like, me. Oh, it does scare me. You look at a blank canvas, it's very intimidating, but yeah. when you just but let it with out. It. Just let it come out. Yes. So the subconscious reveals it and the subconscious paints it because the subconscious deals through imagery. That's why when we do plant medicines and we see the hallucinations and the symbols and the shapes and the, the colors, it's all very symbolic. It's like tapestries. And that's how we get emails from our friends. It's like we send off this carpet that looks like a tapestry and it's got shapes and colors. And then they receive that in through their third eye and they read it. And then, then they say, like, you want to have an experience with me and learn and develop? Mm -hmm. I'm working on control. Are you working on boundaries? Oh, we could show up for each other. I'll poke you. You poke me. Let's get uncomfortable. Let's get uncomfortable till we're comfortable with being uncomfortable. That's all it is. See, that's a lot yeah, of the time. Get yeah, comfortable things. with the uncomfortable. A lot of the twin flames, they feel, you know, some of them don't speak to the other person, like I said, for years even sometimes. They but speak you, at the other person. Yeah, you get telepathic communication. You meet yeah. with them in a dream state a lot, yeah. or it's very yeah. vivid. So it's and true. You work you're, out whatever you need to. Whatever yes, whatever weakness is there, you need to work work on it, right? Yeah. You know, and, 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 and you know if if you know what what does you tell your mother tell you like you're a teenager go take a cold shower if you're getting like hot and bothered you know what I mean like, <laughs> like sexually or something like that but like uh, metaphorically but the 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 thing that you can do is whenever you're nervous like every day take a, uh, you're comfortable with that hot shower. And then you shut it off and you're kind of like scared to be cold. So you're like, uh, and you act and you're like, get the towel. And you're like, oh, oh, you're doing this like big show, you know, in the shower. It's like get comfortable with being uncomfortable. So like make the water cold, cold, and then like freezing cold and just keep your composure. Stop pretending that you need to like, oh, 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 you know, like just be cool with being That's so cool. funny be because cool. I was guided in my life to actually do that. I went to a spa, Scandinavian yeah. spa in Whistler, yeah. and I did not want to jump in the cold tank. Like you basically go in a sauna yeah. or mm -hmm. a hot tub and then you jump in this cold tank and go in a medium yeah. temperature room. But it was the most incredible feeling and I yeah. like on every level when yeah. I finally did it, and I yeah. did, I started doing what you're saying, having a hot bath and then following with an ice cold shower. And yeah. it felt like, I was guided to do that. Like I needed to do it. It shocks your nervous system, right? So if you're nervous, it resets the nervous system oh. and then, then your nerves all tingle. So actually when you open that shower door, you're cold and you're walking into hotter air. So you don't even like need that towel. You're like, whoa, you just walk around the house and, it, <laughs> like, and you're warming I know, up. All I knew is I felt so good. I was like, wow, I feel amazing. Yeah. Like, invigorated. Invigorated. And yeah. I went for a swim for last night. The lake. And yeah. All this yeah. stuff. It's so yeah, cool. Shock yourself. Do the shocking thing. Do the uncomfortable thing. Whatever you are uncomfortable with, get comfortable with it. If you can't do something, you're not good at it practice and become good at it you know and this is really good because for a lot of us in the twin flame community we talk about okay you meet the twin flame you get this amazing intense love connection but then it's literally feels like it's ripped from you so you're going on this path and a big thing you know part of it is all that you've been talking about finding yourself and finding this balance this equilibrium finding your joy living in that finding compassion and love for others and then a big thing that's spoken about is, you know, just finding your soul's mission. Like, what yeah. are you here for? What do you want to do? Like, what? how are you going to leave your imprint or do? And I always think that it's so amazing to hear from you how you talk about giving and acts of service and yeah. how that is the best thing you can do even for yourself. Yeah. So you're not a, you're, you're a soul already. So you're spirit already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're not here to have a spiritual experience. You're here to have a human experience. You're already perfect, whole, complete and fulfilled and in entirely all of yourself. You're here to pretend like you're not perfect because it's called humility, right? And humbleness, right? Mm -hmm. So we actually are working here not to be to strengthen our strengths 
We're already strong in our strengths. You're not here to over uh, spiritual uh, for your arms all the time, and you got these skinny little chicken legs. You forget spiritual leg day. You know what I mean? So <laughs> you're you're always like concerned about you know becoming stronger than you already are strong, which is an overcompensation, yes. which ensues that you are weak about that that is your weakness is your overcompensation because you are trying to give something to that already has it which means you're ignorant to the fact that you aren't aware of where you're giving information and giving energy so you're here to work and strengthen your weaknesses if i came here to get stronger and forget about my weaknesses well guess what i'm gonna do it again because i'm ignoring i'm ignoring my weakness Right. Rather than giving my weakness strength is what it needs. And when you give something, when you break a bone, your bone gets even stronger than it ever was. So that's why we purposefully do negative things to ourselves for really, really, really enriching development. Let's thank the debauchery. Let's thank the depravity. Let's thank the disgusting nature of people doing bad things because it teaches us how to properly be good you know it's very 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 enriching and if you're here to just have a good experience and everybody says it's like oh i ate mushrooms like five times and then i had a bad trip and i never ate it again it's like did you want the universe to roll up the carpet 101 times in a row and johnny gets a hundred amazing mushroom experiences because that's all they're ever supposed to be no you're supposed to have a bad experience you know, because you can't just constantly only want to look at the good. You have to look at what's bad to even know what's good. And that's what makes good people ignorant. And that's why even we re reincarnate because the, the force, like the, the, the craps table where you push the, the chips over to the bet, where we mm -hmm. actually make the bet live and cross that line again back into another body is mm -hmm. ignorance if you're ignorant you will reincarnate again because you are ignoring what you came here even to do and if you're into sense gratification and constantly uh just checking out and oh, i'm on my phone and oh, my problem screw that five hours two hours of facebook will make me forget my problem or i have sex or i'll masturbate or, or, or i'll go eat food or i'll go do anything but uh, address my problem that's where compulsive and obsessive behaviors come through is from ignorance right so let's mm -hmm. be honest and authentic about what's there and let's address and let's stand and face everybody is so scared to face their own soul because oh, they don't yeah. want to look in that closet and, and and even admit that there is something bad in there that's everybody what was hard about doing has some I bad for shit in there Yes, I had to face it head on it. on ayahuasca. Yeah. Face it, feel it. That, that's what yes. ayahuasca does. She makes you feel it. She doesn't make you think about it. She makes you feel what that feels. Oh like. yes. Because that's the energy that's compelling you to do the behavior. It's all a, it's compelling, which which makes you like go pick up that beer and go date that and touch that wrong person and have sex with that wrong person that you shouldn't. Right, all in the name of showing you what you should. So you should, that's why I said after admittance, acknowledgement, forgiveness, and acceptance, and respect comes re reverence. And when we revere that, that all the fuck-ups in our life, that they were the best, most enriching times where we were fully engaged in learning. And if you're sitting on the couch being lazy and you're not doing anything about changing your boring-ass patterns in life, and you're just like, oh, life should just change for me. Happiness will come into my life. I don't have to do anything. I just watch TV and blah, blah, blah. Well, guess what? Your relationship's going to shit. You're going to lose your job. You're going to get sick. You know what I mean? Nothing mm -hmm. motivates us more than fear. If we didn't have fear, fear is also a motivator. Fear is not also just an isolated indecision and, 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 and a bad choice. Fear is what it takes to get you off the fucking couch. You know what I mean? <laughs> so so it actually change your life you know what i mean and then dump that boyfriend get that job that's more in line with your creative nature that that brings you joy that brings you expression that person that compliments you that doesn't judge you that person that lets you be open honest and say absolutely everything without 
ever jumping on your back or using it against you to harm you. Like, so you be honest with a person and then they're just like, oh, save that for later when they screw up or I'm going to hammer them with their own stuff. You know what I mean? So uh -huh, yeah. you really, really want, want to make better choices. The universe doesn't just do things for you that people are like, oh, well, I'll just let the universe do it. You know, the universe is like, well, there's a million ways to do things. And if you're not going to choose one, we'll pick the fun one that we like watching you go <laughs> to your car, man, because it's funny to us. You, know? <laughs> so you have to take control instead of controlling people, take control and make better choices as they're presented to you. And whatever declaration you're making saying, I'm going to be an honest person. Well, then guess what? Some situation is going to come up in your life where, you know, someone drops their wallet and it's full of money and you either give it back to them. Hey, hey, you dropped a wallet or you keep it. Well, you're not being honest. So here comes lesson two. To, to compound lesson one, now to deal with, deal with your thievery. Now you're a thief, you know? So mm. now you learn about being a thief. So it's like compound interest, you know? So when you make declarations, you know, enact the will so that you will be honest. I will be an honest person. Like, I might be honest. You're like, you might be honest? Mm. Well, sounds like I can't trust you now. So that's like, it, every door opens up a new door like a bird's wing. So when I blame you, oh, comes their buddies, shame and regret. You know, like I blame and then I'm ashamed that I blame because I found out I was wrong. And then I regret. I regret for blaming you in the first place. Now I have to say sorry. We have to backpedal, have five conversations till we're okay again. Right? Mm -hmm. Rather than just having compassion frees us from these petty arguments and small problematic things that pile up into major life issues our whole life that we can't resolve because we're covered in just tons of mess and we don't even know which direction it came from because we we just walked away from it every time and we rejected and abandoned ourselves and other people as a consequence of that action. It's always a consequence to your actions. So start mm -hmm. making better actions. You know, stop mm -hmm. saying that you're going to be better. Go be better. You're not a human. Uh, you're a human being. You know what I mean? Not a human. Mm -hmm. Like uh, maybe. Uh, I don't know, <laughs> you know, like, slightly doubting human. I don't even know what I am. What is this? You know, like, you know, these people are always like, oh, that's weird. You know, some existential divine thing happens to them in their daily lives. And like, oh, the weirdest thing happened to me. Uh, and, and yeah, it's just not possible. You're not going to believe it. Yeah, yeah, but I'll <laughs> tell you anyway, but just in case, I don't want you thinking I'm weird or spiritual or anything because, you know, the news says that's weird. You know, we should be more conservative. And, you know, it's like, it's like people are just down talking their own divine life. You know, they're down, yes. like give it the power that it deserves and acknowledge it that it is there. You must believe in something for it to be even real. And if you don't believe anything, then you're creating these, you know, disbeliefs and walls that you got to keep taking down, taking down. And that takes energy. And so it takes energy to enlighten. So mm -hmm. that's the foundation of energy. So I'm not going to go cause a bunch of problems. So I'm affected by those problems. It's like cause and effect. I'd rather be like the affect and influence my reality so that it has an effect. And that's sort of like what a magician does is he has effect. You know what I mean? Yes. And, and that's and, what I'm feeling for a lot of us. They'll say, oh, yeah, you know, figure out your soul mission. And for me, it's not, it's not necessarily, oh, I got to go conquer this, do that. It's like just yeah. being like even you just being you affected me and, yeah. you know, your words or the way the way you live or. And then I'm inspired by that. And then maybe I'll ask you questions. And I'm finding that with my, again, I call them 3D friends because they're not into all this, that, you know, yeah. this stuff. I don't know how you describe it. They're just. But they're into the human experience. And I'll tell you they that. They are. It's on a different, you know, it's just yeah. a different thing, right? And that's cool. But yet, I, find them, I do find them opening up to this very, almost very rapidly lately. Like just one of my yeah. friends recently, you know, like, Trisha, what does it mean? I keep seeing 1111 over and over. And I'm just like, oh, oh, like, it's awesome. You know what I mean? That they're even asking the yeah. question or like, yeah. they're just intrigued by all this world or that there's more, that there's something yeah. beyond this human experience.
because the soul already knows it's 11 11 right the mind is an afterthought so basically i'm in my room and i'm like looking at my kitchen oh i just looked at my bringles the fridge is black hey the calendar it has 22 on it there's a kettle pot my phone's right there oh look at that's a uh, you know the blender i already know it i already know i'm in the room and the mind is like constantly like Oh, there, there that is. Oh, there that is. We already know that. It's too late. Your mind is too late. It's after absolutely everything, and it's just a commentator. It's like a guy commentating a sports game, and then he passed the puck over to there, and then he passed the puck. <laughs> or he unconsciously passed the puck. And so even when I'm talking with my hands, I'm unconsciously moving them. It's already too late. If I was to think of things to do this, I, oh, one, two, oh, it's too late. I already put up my hand before my mind could even say that, you know, so stop giving power to the mind, you know what I mean? Yes, and yes. And the thing is, is that the soul, the soul will always alert you, and if you're in your higher state to perception, you will always, that's why we see a different reality, is because the soul alerts you at the right time. So basically, if it's 11-11, the soul goes, it looks at the clock. Because we've already quantumly absorbed the whole room. Just because you're not looking at it doesn't mean your eyes are absorbing the whole room. You're just focused uh, looking at your phone and then you look over at the clock at the right time. And the only thing that's doing is basically your soul is going, uh, is going to do it to you repeatedly to tap you on the shoulder and go, yes. look, I'm here, I'm here, communicate with me. That, you know, see the magic, see the magic. Everybody's all like, what's it mean? What's it mean? Can I describe it? Can I describe it? Can I define <laughs> it? Can I like, oh, yeah, yeah my friends. What the cute thing is, is you look up online and it's like, oh, your, your angels are with you. Your spirit guides are with you or your awakening. It's a sign, you know, like, and even just seeing that, like, it's, it's precious okay. for sure. So what you're saying is basically... Uh, giving power to a, a, an outside existence of yourself. Oh, my angels, my guides, my everybody but me has alerted me to something so I can know. Oh, my guides are telling me stuff. You know, these people. Oh, who, I'm saying guides, that if they look online, that's what they would find. Oh, that's what it says. Yeah. yeah. So basically, um, give power to yourself that you are the guide, <laughs> that you are the soul that is guiding your eyes to look at the clock. You know what I mean? And then you're, it's yeah, just your soul trying to get your attention and your awareness and get you to focus somewhere else, <laughs> you know? Yes. On something else, right? And it's a way to get you into numerology, which might get you into chakras. Exactly, and that's what crystals, I mean. Like, and then it gets you into healing. You know what you know, I mean? That, so, the, the meme online that says that means the truth. It's just that it caught their attention. And I'm like, wow, yeah. that's awesome. You know what yeah. I mean? Or... And just this whole shift that, I mean, the world's always shifting, don't get me wrong, but I do feel something, something very powerful happening in this life. It's already happened. Yes, you're right. It's just a matter of, it takes time for light to turn into density. So this is a very slow motion reality. So the fourth dimension is very fast. And that's why you watch the movie, The Matrix, and they slow down the bullets because from the fourth dimension, that's how slow we look. And that's why psychics are very predictable. Because if I'm moving really slow, it's very predictable that you're going to open this cupboard. Wow, you're so psychic. You can predict that I'm going to touch that knob. Oh, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, because we can see it coming. You know? You know yeah, right? Yeah. That's pre premonition, right? Because yeah. we're... Our, our souls are already ahead of time and it's already happened. Any ideas coming funneling in and then being digested into the material world. So it's already happened. That's why you need to go to a place when you go within and go to your soul. You can start to create scenarios for your soul to give to you so that they happen in your life. Instead of trying to like create and solve the problems in your life. So if I like came out of your house and dumped a pile of dirt in front of your house and said, shovel it to your backyard every day, there's a problem. You got a pile of dirt, get it to the back. Every day you're begrudgingly like, oh man, just keep solving the same problem. Maybe you'll try to get more efficient at getting the dirt there, but that's, that's still the problem. You know, mm -hmm. you got to go to the source. You got to go within. Maybe go to the dump and find out where that dump truck is coming from and go talk to the supervisor who keeps telling you to put 
put it there. You know, so go talk yeah. to yourself who yourself is putting that pile of shit in front of you so you can clean it up constantly, but you keep solving the subsurface program and you're not dealing with the 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 source of the issue and that's what the medicines and the plant medicines get you to do is to go within and it actually brings the subconscious out into the conscious that's why you hallucinate and you see sort of the energy behind that and then it, it purges the unconscious and gets it out once you address and acknowledge this that then you can purge it out of the unconscious right so it's like yeah. that's like going to the dump and going to the guy that's crapping inside of you, that pile of dirt, and then let's go get the dump truck and the guy and the guy that owns the dump out of there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so that's a really good analogy. Yeah, you got to go to the place and meet where the problem is, not fix the surface of the problem. You know what I mean? So that's the same mm -hmm. thing with anybody. It's just like... People want to buy away their problems with material goods. It's like, oh, I fucked up really bad. Okay, yeah, yeah. Or I don't spend enough time with my daughter because I'm working so much. Maybe I buy her a car. That'll buy away my guilt, right? Nothing is going to replace the time that you didn't spend with your daughter. You know, the, the, you, have to, you have to hold them and comfort them. If you don't hold them and make them feel secure, your daughter is going to have a sense of insecurity maybe in her life. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and you can't just buy shit and buy your problems away. And you can't have yeah. anything outside of yourself solve the problem. Oh, if I get this and do that and do that, I'll get there. No, you won't. It's inside you. If you deal with it, then you can have a better time going places, right? So the ego is very complex and the soul is very simplest to me, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the, the soul is like a state of peace, a state of joy, a state of relaxation, a state of wonder, a state of amazement, a state. They're all states. States means there's nothing to do. There's no nowhere to go. Just be in peace. Be with happy. Be kind be wonderful okay do i need more of it no no i'm here i have it i'm in it i'm in peace which means i'm in peace that means i don't need to go get more of it now the ego will hijack your spirituality and you'll be laying at a sound therapy and the ego's like hey man you see this peace it's pretty good right yeah, the mm -hmm. soul's really ambitious. It has everything to do with ambition and desire. So the soul will be like, the ego will be like, yeah, you need more peace, more peace. You're like, but I'm in peace right now. I'm actually at peace. Yeah, you need more of it, more of it. You need to do some complex things. You need to go do five yoga retreats, maybe some ayahuasca. You need to go do this. You need to go find peace outside of yourself. And every little uh, um, uh, weekend retreat you go to, there will be a little bit more peace there. And then you, you, you might get peace one day. You're believing that you don't have peace and it's going you get you hunt down and go find peace like you don't have it. Another overcompensation. So once you say, no, I'm already at peace. Now, if I'm at peace, I can go to the retreat in peace and enjoy and learn thinking I don't need anything from it but to enjoy being there with the people that are there that are enriching my life. So that's mm. what I'm giving power to is I'm giving power to being peaceful, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? You, yes. Know? you know, so I can become the new cause to my effect, right? So I could be cause. Why? Because because I'm being the cause. I'm being the cause so that I could create an effect. And that's what magicians do. They create an effect through pageantry by putting on a show and dressing up and, you know, not moving your body this way, but just like, you know, there's a, 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 a tons of ways to lay down. You can lay down just like, uh, or you could be like, hey, you know, like you <laughs> a little more like more magic to it by more expression so all's magic is is a willingness to express you know and if you're willing to express and you're willing to give yourself up as an expression then you will be gifted because whatever you give you get you get gifts mm -hmm. then you're gifted by spirits who will impart you with very nice ways of painting and then you can live on your art or you'll come up with crafts or you come up with that new invention because you're an open vessel to express and help so when you're willing yes. to help then you will be gifted 
And that's why that person, wow, that artist is really gifted. Well, because he's giving to the world beauty. He's giving his beauty up to the world. So mm -hmm. that the world feels beauty back and he receives that back as his gift so that he's able to do so, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't need to strive. You don't need ambition. You don't need to pretend that it's going to take my five-year plan to feel fulfilled. You feel fulfilled right now. Because if you say that you're not, that means you don't have it and you are pretending. You are mm -hmm. already fulfilled. You're already whole. You're already complete. You're already loved. You're already accepted. You're already amazing. You're already everything. It's your lack of belief that you aren't that is basically causing you to do things, to go get things outside of yourself to make you think in a false positive sense that you're getting it, and that's why it's always an empty hole and you'll never buy enough cars and you'll never buy enough houses and you'll never have enough women and you'll never drink enough to make you fucking happy. Ever. Oh gosh, yeah. Right? Because you need to that. realize that you already are happy and you're just pretending not to be. You're pretending. I've met people like that and they come into money, they come into success and they've said they're more miserable than ever because they thought my twin flame actually he got a successful gig as an actor and he was making the best money of his life and i remember him just so exhilarated and excited going into that and then all of a sudden he's getting all this money he's getting all these things he always wanted these experiences and he told me he was actually more miserable than ever because he yeah. always held that belief well if i have money then i would be happy if I have success, then I would be happy. And suddenly he had yeah. it all and he was more depressed yeah. than ever. And yeah. I've met others in the same boat. Yeah. You know, just you living for, you know, getting a ton of women and money. money to happy with it. <laughs> yes. Right? You, just be not... happy with those things you have. Be happy with what you got. You know, and then money is just a byproduct of your happiness. And then money flows in with abundance and you're happy to receive it because you're happy. You know, yes. money doesn't make you happy, but if you're depending on it to, then it'll show you and exploit that. You know what I mean? I find that I receive, like, as far as manifestation, I'll receive more and yeah. when I'm in the flow. And also when I'm in the right energetic relationship with the money, like, yes. okay, yes. I, I yeah. really want this money so I can bring my son on this magical trip to blah, blah, blah. And we can have yeah. this beautiful experience will remember forever you know or i right. want this money to make my home more beautiful like because it makes me feel better not like oh i'm going to show off to my friends and i'm going to get this and really yeah. stick it to them and i'm going to have the coolest right. thing and like that yeah. egoic sense it's not whether you have money the true wealth is your qualities and who you are and what you're willing yes to but uh, uh and spending is more about spending time than money you know what I mean? Yes. So you're putting this money on a scale of like amounts. You know what I mean? So it's like, um, oh, geez, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> it's just like enjoying the fruits of life, enjoying the human yeah. experience. And money is a tool for that, I find. Yeah. And it's if not, I see it in that way. It's not whether you have it, it's how. How. It's always a question how. Okay. So how do I spend your money? So if you have money, you start to reason with money. You got to let go of reason, you know, let go of all reasoning, right? Because, you, mm -hmm. oh, I need a reason to go uh, dance. Oh, I need a reason to be happy. I need a reason for all this stuff. No, it, the, you can have some reasons and maybe go find out what they are through the experience and money might help you get there. But at the end of the day is how do you spend the money? Did you spend it with authentic kindness? Did, did you spend it uh, with a good nature? Did you spend it with good intentions? How are you spending your money? So it's like not about your thoughts and reasonings, thinkings. It's like how, I think uh, like what when I ask you, uh, what do you think about that? What do you think about what that guy just did over there? You're going to tell me your thoughts. And that will tell you the difference. How do you feel about that? Two different things. Because now you have to speak from your soul. You have to speak from your heart. So when you say how I feel about things, I'm speaking from my heart. And when I say I'm thinking about things, I'm speaking from my mind. And we all know these are two different polarities, you know. These mm -hmm. are one's logical and one's emotional, right? And 
the, 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 the thoughts are coming from the emotions. So when we go to the source and we ask you, how do you feel about how you are spending your money and how you are spending your time? Now we can address and get the answer of the who, what, when, and where, and why, and the there, then, this, then, and that, right? So like, mm -hmm. what, when, and where, and why is it all confusions? Uh, where did you go? Uh, I don't know. What did you do? Why, why did they do it? I don't know, right? And then the T's are like, oh, there it is. There he is. That guy over there, he did that to me. What did he do? He did it with this, this thing right here, this thing. He did this, you know? So it's mm -hmm. more precise, you know? But how answers everything. So how do I build a house? Well, I'm going to show you a quote. How is the action? The other two are just fucking two people bickering like liberals and conservatives. The who's and the them's. Who are they? Who are they? It's just a confusing argument. There's no real wisdom there. But when you go to the middle of how, how do I build a house? Well, I build it with love and I build it this way and I go get a hammer. Let me show you how to cut some wood and let me show you how to put on a wall and put some windows in. Let me show you how to do it with patience. And when I bang my finger, I don't make a blame my, the guy down the ladder for not moving it. You know, I do it with kindness and I, how do I live in this house while well, I live with my family and I, I take care of them with security? How? Okay, when did you do this? Where did you do that? I did it on this street. I did it with them. I did it with my family, my brother and sister specifically. It, it, you, it, once you do the how is the action, that answers all the doubts, all the questions later. So how is the experience, right? Mm -hmm. And instead of mm -hmm. why did you do that to me? Well, how do you feel about that? Well, let me share my emotion and let's address that specifically. And then all the other questions get answered once you ask the how and show mm -hmm. the how, right? Mm -hmm. So it's how do you live? How do you die? How do you go about this, you know? And that, that's all you've been asking me, like, how do you do it? <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. And that's been so awesome. Like, I feel like, oh, there's just a wealth of information. I feel like I could probably listen to this over and over and over again. So yeah, many, because I feel like you just are channeling far. information even at a fast speed that it's like sometimes my brain can't even keep up. That's why I close my eyes and I do. I feel like I'll yeah. re listen to this a few times. I might even splice it up into a couple little sections. And this yeah. is awesome. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and what you've learned along the way and how you're living your life. Nice. Really appreciate that. I really love learning from you and just watching you bloom into this beautiful flower that you are living a beautiful life thank you <laughs> and that's something that i've worked on i'll just address that at the end just to, to yeah. by example is to admit that one of my major characteristic uh things that need refinement i won't even call them flaws they just need refinement and as they mirror as i'm talking right there's something that i could do actually to get my point across better and that's probably to slow down and be easy i feel and... like you honestly i don't even mean it in a bad way i mean it like you have so much information bursting out of you like it's yeah. it's like lightning and i love it i think it's so inspiring i think it's so cool like i don't even know it shows me that you're in a channeling state you're in a flow state because you're it seems to me that you're not even thinking things out and i don't even know what i'm gonna flowing. say next exactly it's i just don't flowing out of you <laughs> at such a pace that it seems like your mouth is trying to keep up with the flow <laughs> yeah my thoughts are too late if i was to think about what i was gonna say you know and that's and in the conversation when i try to think i lose it Right? No, Rather you get allowing it to come out. Allow yourself to express. So express. Right? That's what I love about well, I don't you. Get in the way. Every time I, I meet you my... in... exactly every time I meet you in person and we just have these conversations and literally I'm just I find it so entertaining. I'm laughing and literally I want you to have your own podcast or something. The world well, needs more Ryan in information. Funny. This is the <laughs> first thing I've done, so yeah. It's meant to be. It's part of it's part of the journey for sure because we want more of this for sure. So let us know when you do get something going and I'll I'll post it in the description box, okay? Oh, thank you so much. Thank Appreciate you it. so much, Ryan. So awesome talking to you. Let's do it Thanks again care. soon, okay? Awesome. Okay. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.